Hey everyone, it's me, Matt. Welcome back. So in today's video, I wanted to give you an end of November yard tour to give you a status update on all the plants I've got growing in my garden. I wanted to show you everything that's in bloom, as well as some plants that aren't looking too hot. I also wanted to show you some monarch caterpillars I've got on my milkweed plant and give you an update on my fall veggies. So let's get into it. So to kick off the yard tour, I wanted to start down here at the end of my driveway, looking up towards the house to give you an overview of the entire front yard. So some of you may already know from prior videos that I completely redid this front landscape earlier this year. It was actually back in May. I planted up predominantly Florida natives and Florida friendly plants. I also ripped out my old lawn as part of the transformation and replaced it with 234 St. Augustine sod plugs, which you can see have filled in and spread to this beautiful lawn I have today. Starting here in the front, I've got my lantana plants. You can see they currently aren't in bloom, but they are full, they are green, and they're looking great. And then behind them in this flower bed, I've got quite a few Lanceleaf Coreopsis plants, and you can see they are not looking good. They are struggling. We had a prolonged period of heavy rain a few weeks back, and they got some sort of powdery mildew or fungus, and they dried up. They're looking pretty crispy. But as a test a few days ago, I did shear two of them back completely to the ground, and you can see they are growing uh, new leaves, so they're pushing new growth. So this one here is pushing new growth, and then this one back here as well. So in the next few days, I'll probably come out here and I'm gonna shear off the tops of all of these other Lanceleaf Coreopsis plants to try to encourage them to push new growth too. But not all my Coreopsis plants look a mess. So these are the Levensworth Coreopsis and they're looking great with their little yellow delicate flowers with their blackish brown centers. And then one of my lyre leaf sages is blooming. You can see it's got this periwinkle blue flower. There's a few buds getting ready to bloom as well. But this is the plant that all summer was pushing out the bloom spikes with no flowers. It was so weird. But I'm finally seeing little hints of the blue flowers in the garden. And then right here, I've got my many flower beer tongue plants. So these are in the foxglove family. They haven't bloomed yet, but when they do, they're supposed to have tall white flower stalks. In any case, I still really like their leaf color and texture in my landscape. And over here, I've got my bush daisies. They're blooming with their little yellow flowers and their vibrant green leaves. And then behind them, I've got the blue salvias. So the blue salvias were looking a little leggy, kind of like they were on their way out, but they started pushing all this new growth out of their centers. So I need to come out here and I need to trim off the longer spindly branches in the next few days. And then next here, I wanted to show you my forked blue curl plants. So these are a flowering shrub. I've got four of them here. They are just finishing their bloom cycle, but you can see they still have quite a few of their little blue flowers, really unique flowering shrub, one of my favorites in the yard. A few weeks back, there was more blue flowers on this plant than green leaves. It was absolutely stunning. Again, one of my absolute favorite plants in my yard. And then moving over here towards the Adirondack chairs, you can see the white verbena, they're looking amazing. They've put on so much size in the last few weeks and they're really filling in this area nicely. And then above the verbena, I've got the white tropical sage plant. So they are putting on a beautiful end of November show. They're also really popular with the pollinators. And then in the front here, I've got my milkweed plant. So I've seen a total of four monarch caterpillars on this plant in the last few weeks, but I'm currently only seeing two. So I've got one here sleeping under this leaf right now. And then there's another one right in here, taking a little snooze underneath the uh, leaf as well. And look, I found the third one, but I still can't find the fourth. I know I've talked a lot about my milkweed in some of my prior videos. So this milkweed has dealt with its fair share of pests this year between a milkweed beetle infestation and then an aphid infestation. It's given me a lot of trouble, but I am happy to have it in my garden because it is the host plant for the monarch butterfly. Also, if you've enjoyed this video so far, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate your support. Continuing on, on the other side of my Adirondack chairs, I've got some more tropical sages. So these ones are pink and then red. And then over here on the side, I've got another beautiful Levensworth Coreopsis that's blooming with its yellow flowers and dark centers. And then I've got more yellow color here with my Rubecchia. So these black eyed Susans are continuing to put on a colorful show. And then tucked back behind the palm and the tropical sages, you can see the deep red foliage of my Hawaiian tea plants. So these Hawaiian tea plants have been blooming the last few weeks and the pollinators are absolutely in love with the pinkish yellow flowers on the flower spikes. 
And then these Hawaiian tea plants down closer to the street aren't currently blooming, but look at how vibrant the pink and the red foliage is. It's absolutely stunning. And then moving up to the front porch, you can see my holiday containers and decorations are looking festive for Christmas. And then here between my rocking chairs, I've got my pothos plant and my fern. So the pothos plant and the gray pot I actually propagated from cuttings a few months back and it's doing really good. And then down here on the ground, I've got my purple orchid. So I'm really hoping that it blooms later this year. It puts on an amazing show. I also wanted to talk about my impatient plant up here on my front porch. So this impatient plant has just finished its third summer. Typically impatients are grown as annuals, but it's found a little microclimate up here on the porch and continues to thrive. I did deal with some pest pressure a few times throughout this year, but I've sprayed the plant with neem oil and it continues to make a comeback. Before heading to my backyard, I wanted to show you my Supertunia Vista Jazzberries and my Dune Sunflowers down here at the end of my driveway. So these Supertunias have been in the ground for a little over a month and they've put on so much growth, they're really filling in this area nicely. And then these Dune Sunflowers have been in the ground for a little less than a month and they've easily doubled in size. And I love the little yellow sunflowers next to the purple Supertunias. This really has filled in so much already and I can't wait until it's completely covered with the purple and yellow flowers. So moving to the backyard here, we're going to start with the veggie garden. So my organ sugar pod peas and my cucumbers that I transplanted in October are doing good. They've established, but I have been dealing with pest pressure. I've been dealing with hornworm caterpillars on the cucumbers eating the leaves. So I have had to spray them with neem oil. It's been a little bit of a back and forth give and take with the plants and the pests, but I'm slowly but surely winning. I've also been dealing with squirrels. So the squirrels have been coming in here in the mornings and digging around the plants, which hasn't been helpful. So I placed this fake snake to try to deter the squirrels. It's kind of worked, but I think that they've realized after a few weeks that it's not real. And then here's an update on my seed tray. So my tomatoes are ready to be transplanted. So these tomatoes are not frost tolerant. So I'm gonna be transplanting them into containers. That way I can take them indoors if there's a risk for frost later this year. And then I've got my broccoli here and my lettuce. So I was able to salvage these seedlings. So if you saw the video from a few weeks back, my broccoli and lettuce were really leggy. I actually transplanted these and I buried the stems deep, only exposing the leaves above the soil and it worked. The seedlings have put on some size, they've grown their adult leaves, so they should be able to be transplanted here in the next week or so. And then over here, I've got my carrots that I direct sowed into the soil a few months back. They've put on quite a bit of size, they're looking great. And then behind those carrots, I've got my pineapple plants. Pineapple plants are looking amazing. They don't have any fruit on them at the moment, but they are looking spectacular. Actually, this one here in the pot was propagated from a pineapple top at the beginning of October, and it's put on some sides. It's actually looking really healthy. I'll link the pineapple propagation video in the description of this video if you're interested in trying to grow your own pineapple. They're really easy, and they can be grown indoors as house plants in colder climates. Panning across the back patio, you can see my four holiday containers. So there's three here on the umbrella stand, and then there's one more tucked back behind the lounge chair. I've also got these tropical plants here on the patio. I've got a philodendron, there's a fiddle leaf fig, and then tucked back here, I've got a monstera. And then wrapping the entire patio, I've got some more of those vibrant red and pink Hawaiian tea plants. And you can see these ones are also in bloom, like the ones up in the front yard. And then over here, I've got my plumeria trees. They're tucked away in the corner. So as the temperatures have started to drop, they've actually entered dormancy. So you can see they've dropped all their leaves. In the spring, the summer, and early fall, I have them out on my patio to showcase them more with their green leaves and beautiful flowers. But in the winter, when they go dormant, I tuck them away here in the corner. And then right next to my plumerias, I've got my banana trees. So these are dwarf Cavendish banana trees. I've had this little banana grove planted for about seven years and I've had a ton of bananas over the years. These are one of my favorite plants in my garden. They're a ton of fun. I especially love their flowers. The banana flower is really unique and the pollinators absolutely love them. So that's a wrap with my end of November yard tour. You can see I've got so much going on in my garden. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.